Good morning, everybody, and welcome to week six of the Insane Productivity Mortgage Coach Mastermind. Uh, for a number of you, this is week number one. You signed up um, at our, our kickoff uh, this week. Welcome to the Mortgage Coach uh, Insane Productivity Mastermind. It's great to have you. Uh, so I've got a, some of you are new to this program and what we do and how we do it. Uh, what we're doing is is we're reviewing last week's session. For some of you that are brand new, you haven't, you know, last week might be number one, or you just signed up a matter of a day or two ago and you haven't got to it. I think it's important to note that this isn't like spoiler alert. You know, this is not a movie where if you don't watch it from the start and you get a sneak preview at the end, it's kind of like it ruined the movie. That's not what this program is. You know, this is a transformational experience. Uh, Darren did do it in a very intentional order. Week one, week two, and we don't want to. You don't want to overwhelm yourself because you want to listen to the content, you want to study it, you want to reflect on it, you want to do some personal exercises around it. But also one of those things where you got to do it multiple times, and you've you've got to remember it. I mean, to have a life-changing experience, you can't just read the chapter one time and move on with life. Uh, that's why we did this mastermind is we wanted to give a venue for people to to read, to talk about it, to ask questions into mastermind with your peers. So that's what we're here to do. Um, for those of you, um, many of you are currently on mute. I am going to unmute everybody in a minute so that we can be a bit more interactive. I do want to remind you that you do need to control your mute on your side. And if you don't control your mute, we can turn you off, but then you're muted and you can't just jump in um, throughout the conversation. Now you can raise your hand and we'll bring you in. So if you have a question, you can raise your hand. Also you can ask questions in the GoToWebinar control panel. So there is a question section. I will be moderating that. And if you, um, either one, you're muted or you can't speak up or you just don't want to talk but you want to still either, you know, throw in a comment or ask a question, you know, there is a venue to type that in. Uh, what you are looking at on my screen right now is the Mastermind secret Facebook group. So you will only know about that if you are part of this program. If you do not have access to that, um, you should uh, let us know. You can either email support at mortgagecoach.com or you can make a comment in uh, the GoToWebinar control panel. So I am going to try to unmute everybody just to see how that goes real quick. And then Todd Bookspan, I'm going to hand it off to you uh, to kind of walk everybody through last week and uh, kick things off. So where is the unmute button? Yeah. Okay, there we go. Marcy, can you help me unmute everybody? Oh, there we go. Bliss Sawyer, welcome to the call. How are you doing, on Bliss? Doing great. Glad to be here again. Great to have you. Hey, Carl, uh, welcome to the Carl, or welcome to the call, Carl Self. Hey. Hey. Uh, <laughs> hey, 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 so we had a we had a mute. There was something going on with your feedback. So heads up on that. Uh, Dave Danvoy, how how you doing, Dave? Doing fine. Good to have you here. All right, all right. We got a lot of folks, and we got a lot of new folks. Uh, Mark Thompson, how you doing, buddy? Good morning. Nice to be here. Yeah, good to have you. Well, again, a reminder to everybody: please control the mute on mute on your side. Either mute your own phone. Uh, but we do want to make this interactive, so we want to unmute you so you can ask questions and jump in on the conversation. So, Todd Bookspan, I'll hand it off to you, uh, and let's rock. Todd, you can unmute yourself. Todd, I unmuted you. Oh, there you go. You muted me. All right, that's good. I was say I was unmuted on my end. So, good morning, everybody. I don't know about all of you, but I've been looking forward to these calls uh, since we've been doing them, and it's definitely great to see a lot of new names on there. I think probably the important things are uh, what Dave just said, right, that, that this is all about all of us participating. Uh, I've, I've learned to become, or to become comfortable with the awkward pause uh, when I call on people. So we know it takes a minute for you to unmute, and, uh, and so just uh, jump in as, as we go through and ask questions. I think one of the biggest things to remember about insane productivity is that is that it's something you're going to go through more than once. Uh, all the panelists on the call 
who will be interacting, who have been part of um, any of Darren Hardy's uh, world before, you know, the common theme every time I hear them speak each week is that they've done these things multiple times. And so that's, you know, going to be kind of the fun part about it. Um, certainly, you'll all see my videos. They're probably, I'm no professional speaker, I laugh, because, you know, I don't have a cool orchid or anything like Darren does or the beach behind me. But um, but my goal there was just to give a quick, brief synopsis of the previous the previous module and uh, if applicable, throw a couple of mortgage loan originator uh, pieces into it that I think will be important important for us. So, um, yeah, there we go. There's my thanks, Dave, for putting me up there. That's that's awesome. Um, but uh, you know, I'm really excited. So we're gonna kind of spend a couple of minutes today reviewing module five. And again, as Dave said, if you guys aren't, you know, a lot of you are on module one. Um, ironically, they 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 migrated me over to the new Insane Productivity and cut off my old one, so I don't have Module 5 anymore. Luckily, I have good notes and uh, mediocre memory. But, um, you know, Module 5 was really kind of the start of defining your life, right? So um, those of you who are just jumping in, you're going to see that Darren's going to be talking tr through the first four modules about habits and, and sort of what you're, uh, what's going on in your life, and he's going to start uh, narrowing down uh, what we do so we can focus on what's truly important. And uh, last week we started talking about, you know, what is success to you. And uh, so I'd love to have uh, one of the panelists uh, jump in and, and maybe with their idea of what success is to them to kind of talk to the group about it. I don't know, Jen, Cindy, Dave, Kristen, any of you want to jump in on that? Yeah, I will. It's Jen. Um, you know, I thought I, uh, we spent a lot of time actually talking last week about that, so we're just kind of duplicating some of our, our information um, today. And I, I just want to, um, you know, sprinkle in a little bit about what's going to happen in Module 6, um, because I think these two are very, very closely related. And so we, when everyone gets to these two modules, I think they'll, they'll really understand it. The thing, the thing that I just want to share with everybody is that um, I'm still struggling with defining these three things for me. And I've been in Darren's program almost a year. Um, and part of the struggle is that, you know, as mortgage professionals, we are um, blessed to make a lot of money. I mean, a lot. It's insanely a lot of money. And so, so the struggle for us is making sure, and I talked about this, you know, early on in, in our sessions, you know, defining the difference between a quality of life and a life of quality. And you know, the quality of life is just all the things that we could buy, the monetary things. And, and Darren will mention this in the sixth module, but the things that we, you know, want. I mean, we're just constantly, we're like, we're like cats on a marble floor, just digging and, you know, going after everything and have to have, you know, the big house and the big this and the big that and the big accolades and, and all of those things. And, you know, really what he's talking about in defining our success and how we define success is trying to dig really deep and make this an inside job. You know, in, he talks about the difference between internal and external. But making it an inside job so that you're really thinking through this. It's just impossible to go through this module and just, because he, he stops the module and says, well, write down three things. You know, I'm letting you know that this is going to be, you know, a very long process for you. And even if you are able to pull out uh, three, you know, high-level things, you're going to, you're going to, start defining them even tighter and deeper and um, adding to the sentence. So you might say, you know, success in the business. Um, now you might define it a little bit more. And, you know, I have to tell you that, you know, I, I teach all over the country. You know, many of us that are moderating here, we're, we're coaches and we teach and we speak everywhere. But one of the things that I just want to really stress to everyone listening is that loans are just the means to the the thing that we're trying to accomplish, the life goal that we're trying to get, those successes that we are, they're just the means to getting there. And so, yeah, we have to really focus on our technical skills, you know, hard and soft skills as they relate to people. But we also have to, you know, people in business, but we also have to realize, you know, why am I doing this? What, what are the reasons behind why I'm why do I need to have fundings of 20 or 30 loans a month or 10 or whatever number you're doing why why is that so important and the end is what we need to be looking at is looking at the forest through the trees you know seeing what is that life look like for you so it's not the here and now it's what is the bigger 
you know, the bigger good out there. Um, and I'll just say one more thing about that, and that's that, you know, I'm amazed when I talk to realtors and loan officers and ask people, how many of you own a home? And everyone raises their hand. And how many of you own a second home? And a few people do. How many of you own real estate? And the funny thing is, more loan officers own real estate than realtors. So it's like saying, hey, uh, use Mary Kay. It's great for you, but I'm using Estee Lauder. You know, so when clients ask, is this a good time to buy, it's like, yeah, you should buy, but I'm not buying, right? So what I'm telling you about there is that what I do this process is that every loan that I close isn't so I can have something fancy today, not the quality of life, but every loan that I close is it allows me to buy and accumulate another real estate investment property, which I now have over 50 properties. And that is my life goal so that I can spend time in the future not chasing the deal that we've been doing all these years, right? And that gives me so much contentment and happiness and passion. So I know that was a long story. It took up a lot of time, but I really want you all to think through this. Don't just write down three things. Really think through these. You might write one down and cross it out later, you know? Um, okay, so I'm going to jump off my soapbox, but I, I just think that's really important. <laughs> I think it's really important. Hey, Jen, this is the city. That was awesome. <laughs> well, I love it because a lot of what I teach is around designing your life. In fact, when I posted on our private group, um, I put my number one thing is success for me is I live my life by design, not by default. And, you know, when we start to get really intentional about how we lead our life, and that's why I love this program that Darren has put forth in Insane Productivity because it really is about leading with intention and you know when I first listened to this module of course one of the things that really like sort of hit home with me is because I had this you know he talks about achievement addiction and I think a lot of mortgage originators get really addicted to the adrenaline, adrenaline rush of the achievement um, and sometimes we lose sight of why we're doing this crazy business to your point you know why are we doing it? we always talk about you know dropping into your why but it's so important and we talk about you know, what success means to us, that really is, you know, kind of driven by what your why. In fact, uh, one of my clients yesterday told me that she wants to own a lake home and in Idaho, and so she put three pictures of the lake home right in her office, right in front of her computer screen so that she's aware every single day, you know, one of the things that she's doing is to create this great lifestyle for, you know, her and her, her family. And I was also reminded in what you were talking about, Jen, and I, this is a, you know, Jim Rohn, who's one of the great mm, uh, transformational leaders and is definitely the mentor for Darren Hardy. He was also the mentor for Tony Robbins, and one of my favorite quotes from him is, work harder on yourself than you do on your job, because that's the game changer. You know, it's, it's easy to get caught up in the addiction of the work, but when we really start to work on ourselves, because when we start to bring our best self forth, in the world, that's when our mortgage business completely wow. takes on a different, a different space. So I love this conversation about designing your glorious life because we've got to get intentional about that so we're not just doing deals, but we're okay. in a relationship wow. with our business. So I got an above it. Love it. Whoops, we've got someone there doing some business wow. in the background that needs to be <laughs> muted. Um, you know, it's uh, again, I think it's what you just heard were, were a couple of great testimonies to I uh, love the life by design idea. Certainly, uh, I don't imagine that there's too many people who don't want to own 50 plus investment properties like Jen does. That's uh, awesome. Congratulations. Um, I'm hoping that Troy Troy Roots unmuted on the call. Uh, maybe Troy, you can jump in because I know you put your definitions of success on the Facebook page. I'd love to have you share those with the group if you're able. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Uh, yeah, it was really interesting on that. I don't have those in front of me right now. I'll be honest with you. So. Dave, you can scroll them down. I'd appreciate it, but it really made me think. It was really difficult for me to do because it was really I lived the life of everyone, like my parents and, and so forth, like Dave, Dave was talking about and you know, Dan, Darren was talking about. And it really, I had to really open my mind up as to what I, what success meant to me. And then with module six, my values and others' values is really eye-opening. And really, um, a lot, took a lot of stress off, a lot, 
a weight off my shoulders, even between the last two modules. So oh, I love hearing that. I think it's, do you remember what day it is you so hard that to do. Do you remember what day so you posted that to. way? Yeah, don't, don't worry about it, Dave. I want to pull it up, though. Yeah, seriously. Well, I just, <laughs> I've, I've September, a, September 2nd, Dave. September 2nd. September 2nd, got it. I'll have it there in a minute. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, you know, to everybody's point, um, and those of you that are listening that will be chirping in here in a moment because we're going to ask you to, um, you know, these these are things that you should walk around with and carry with you, and and part of your decision making process that Darren again will talk in module six, you know, um, and and I think you just mentioned that too is that. Um, you know, assessing what your values are really helps you identify your success. I almost think that these two modules should be switched. I really do. Because I think if you can define your values, then you can define who you want to be in your success. Because, you know, when I started looking at them, I thought, gosh, I really, and, and really going through that process, you know, of identifying, you know, the 10 things, the 30 things, and that what really resonates with you. Um, and I'll share them next week, but when I share them, uh, it's amazing because it is me to a T, and I didn't plan it that way. I just started isolating, and by the time I got down to three, I was like, wow. But it made me go back to my successes and say, do these align with my values? Are the successes that I'm trying to do, does it align with my values, or am I trying to appease somebody else and say, oh, I want to do you know, a certain amount of loans. I want to have a certain team. Um, so I thought that was really valuable. So did you get those up? I saw yeah. Cindy's. Yeah, just down a little bit more. But I thought the same thing. I mean, that six and five should have been flip-flopped myself because I started thinking that, you know, regards to my marketing and regards to my, regards to my success goal, the same, are they really aligned? And I actually noticed that a couple things on my marketing weren't really aligned with my with my values, believe it or not. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, you know, I'm not surprised to hear that. We often find as people go through any type of process like this or a life planning process that um, when you actually sit down and think about these things that um, although you're kind of on autopilot and it's typically your, your guiding beacon out there, as Aaron would say, it's not something that people have taken the time to actually pull away from it right down. And so I think that's one of the you know, probably one of the best parts of these two modules is having that that ability to, to pull back. And so those of you who haven't gotten there or even those of you who haven't, haven't spent the time working on it, uh, you know, that would be certainly the, the action plan that I would that I would say, right? Plan plan some time this weekend or next week where you got a couple hours uh, outside of the office, away from the home, somewhere where you can kind of get away and actually work on, you know, work on this stuff. Because ultimately that's the way you're going to get the biggest, the biggest lift. You know, I always love when we talk about the why because uh, Dave has built up a relationship with Simon Sinek and he's had Simon on calls before. And what I love is, is, is all about the why, right? So I feel like these modules start tying that in as well. Dave, do you mind jumping in and talking to the group again about your, your personal and your mortgage coach why? Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's funny, one of the personal projects that I have started going through this, and now that we're six weeks into it, is just I forget stuff. You know, like I, I think of things, what was that in chapter two that was so important? And so I've been creating this checklist uh, from week to week on what was the big takeaway from week to week that I want to remember. So that literally whether I do review it daily or whether I review it weekly, I can remember it. And, and it's funny that you bring up why, because I really attend to the chapter in right now. It's all about finding your why. And, I, and by the way, I do agree with everyone, kind of doing the values first and then through your values, defining success um, seems a bit more natural for me. But you know, I'm sure Darren had some intention around that. And, and to everybody's point, it's like, hey, we've got to go back and forth and really study it. It's not like we can write down our values one time and we're done. You know, it's you're constantly. You know, I've been life planning for a long time. Been to the Building Champions Experience. Going to be get there again this week. And you know, you just you can't work on that enough. Uh, but the mortgage coach why, for folks that don't know it on this call, it really is to make social change how people get into mortgage debt. You know, our goal is that you know we want um, millions, you know, at least two million families annually getting a total cost analysis. 
and that you know that might seem like okay great goal Dave but it's pretty prolific in how it's changed our business when we decided that hey the goal wasn't how many members we have paying us a monthly fee but our goal is how many times a family gets a total cost analysis it's been pretty profound I mean the company is unrecognizable today from the company that we were when we were a, a sales efficiency tool that was a SaaS business that made money based off of the growth of members. You know, when we really changed the model and the mission became, you know, to help families make better decisions and our customer became the family, it just changed the business. So I, I put a push into everybody on the, on the call right now as mortgage professionals. I think one thing that's important that we should consider, you know, you ask people, hey, what are your goals? And the words deals, transactions, loan, loan volume, gross GCCs, gross commissions, you know, those are all the first things that we think about. But I think if we started thinking about, hey, how many families do we want to serve? How many referral partners do we want to, how many strategic partners do we want to have? And, and we start really thinking at a, at a higher level, it, it starts to really change how you execute and operate your business. And hopefully it will influence your why. You really get a why around helping families, helping neighbors, changing a local community. Um, you know, that could, that, could, that could give you more ambition and more, more purpose in what you're doing. So those are some thoughts. So hey, I would like to get some comments and thoughts. So anybody from the audience, that would like to either one, share your values, or two, share your mortgage why, uh, please raise your hand. Uh, we would like to call on you. So in the Go Meeting control panel, you can raise your hand and we can call on you. Um, Todd, anything else you want to add to that before we hand it off to someone else? Well, no, I love the idea of your one pager. Uh, I think that that's, you know, that's really key. Like I did, a, I did a morning checklist where it's the things that are that I want to make sure with 100% certainty I do every morning, and so I'm reviewing that as I before I'm leaving the house, and then I've got the, you know, the the, the maybe the maybe checklist of the other things that maybe I will do, and, and that's been pretty huge for me. My, my morning routine has probably been the number one thing that's helped me since I reengaged in insane productivity, and uh, you know, I'm not proud of the fact that it that it dropped off a little bit, but ultimately, you know, love getting back on the horse. Um, you know, one of the things as we're talking about why, right, we've got all these originators on the call, and, and it makes me think about uh, the managers on the call, because I think when someone is a manager, especially a producing manager, which is tough, they they have a different why, because that typically includes something about pouring into their people. So I know Dave Gallegos, who's a, a big uh, Aaron Hardy uh, friend, et cetera, is on the call. Dave, you mind speaking about how you view that in your life? Well, and I'm going to go back for a second, and I want to revisit what you said. I love what Jen and um, uh, Cindy talked about, the uh, the opportunity that you have in this industry to um, impact people is and, and impact your own life. Um, uh, I heard this once, and I'm not sure where I heard it, but I thought it was really profound that, you know, we all have families. We're all, if you could be in a position... 20 years from now, whatever, to help out your parents or your 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 brothers or sisters and everything. If you had the ability to write a check for $50,000, because that would make all the difference in the world to them. And that's a blessing, to be able to be in a position to do that. So you're right. It's, I think we get caught up in the money, and the, we get caught up in the money for the stuff. And it's really, we all have figured out after a certain amount of times, like going, the stuff doesn't, it just doesn't matter that much. And uh, I think that there's that, those higher purposes are really the things that matter um, uh, the most to all of us when it's all said and done because none of us are going to care. No one's going to care how much stuff you had, right? So, um, you know, finding that, finding that why and that passion for why you're doing what you're doing I think is so critical because it's easy. To, this is a tough business sometimes, a really tough business sometimes. And we all know how tough it can be. And um, uh, uh, there's got to be more to it than just a commission check. And um, uh, so you got to, I, I, you got to commit. I think you got to connect to the families that we help. I'm in love with the idea of home ownership. I just think it's, I just think it's the coolest thing. When I found Mortgage Coach, I keep going back to this. When I found Mortgage Coach back in the early 2000s, I finally was able to understand. I was just in. I, before that, I think I was just in sales. I mean, I was excited to help people once I figured out how you know qualifying people work and everything else. But 
man, once I got a hold of Mortgage Coach, it changed my whole approach to the business, and it started to give it more meaning that I could show people how to really leverage a tool like that to save money, which then, you know, without realizing it, because I didn't get into all of the, I guess about the same time I got into, um, uh, I was exposed to all of this through a Todd Duncan seminar, or, you know, actually first building champions, I was getting coached by Steve Scanlon, and and then he introduced me to Todd Duncan stuff, and, and which naturally led to Mortgage Coach. And all of these things kind of built on top of each other. And I think that's where, um, uh, I think that's where it's hardest to, to come up with this without knowing what those values are. So I, I would agree. I, I, I don't know if I've ever told Darren this, ago, but the values go before, before the goals. And because uh, if you don't know those values, you're going to write. I think people will change their goals, right? And and I think I did the first time I went through something like this with Darren. I think it was at at the uh, well, it must have been during the High Performance Summit. But I came back and did that work on the values, and I was like, well, now wait a minute, I need to go back there and change some of these uh, some of these things that I'm focusing on. And I have completely forgotten the question you asked me now, Todd. So I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was that was awesome. I was just asking with regards to your why as a branch manager and how that impacts how you're leading it, the loan thank officers you. in your office. Okay, thank you. Well, and that's it, what. Well, that's it. What I just described is what I've tried to do for them, and get them to see that. And uh, because at first it's all about getting your business going. We train a lot of people from the ground up, which I'm really proud of. And I've got some some salespeople that have worked for me. One guy for over 12 years that I brought into the business in 2002, and 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 I think what, I, what I'm most proud of is, um, I get choked up telling this story, we wrote down his goals together back from the old uh, Building Champions Core 4, um, you know, coming up with your goals and everything. So we wrote down a list of his goals back in 2005 or 6, I think it was 2005, and uh, a couple years ago I found that sheet of paper because I had, I had handwritten it for him and, and like everything on that list he had done, so I framed it for him and I gave it to him and and um, he had just bought this car that he had. It was an L he's driving a, a Tesla now, but he was he had an he had, he always wanted a Lexus LS 400, and then he had it. And his wife was a stay-at-home mom, which was really important to him, and so that she didn't have to work. And um, uh, he was living in the house that he wants to spend the rest of his life in. He's living in it. I mean, it was just to be able to impact people's lives like that as leaders. And, and every one of us, it doesn't matter if you're a loan officer or just getting started in this business, you're supposed to be a leader. So every one of us as leaders has the opportunity to impact others that way, especially once you've been given what I think is a gift to be able to understand all of these things that you can, you can do with your life and be able to become more. And then when you start sharing it, that's what I think it's Darren's big, Darren's, Darren's whole purpose, he has said many times, is impact, right? He wants to impact the people's lives and that's really a cool I mean it's a great feeling it's just a great feeling when you see the change that you can help people implement in their own lives so. hey hey Dave it's Cindy I I don't want that to slip by because what you just said to me is sort of like the crux to the whole deal you know when you get clear with yourself about what your value system is and you live from that place and when you share that with others I mean, it's the sharing, and a lot of people carry all that stuff around in their head, but, you know, when I began to get really clear on, you know, who I wanted to show up as in the world and who I am as a human being and that I wanted to impact lives and I wanted to make a difference and I wanted to help people grow and expand their vision of what's possible, and then I began to share that message with other people and share my passion, it's just been incredible, so I don't want to let that slip by because there were several things that you said that I wanted to hone in on here, and when you talked about you know, if you could write a $50,000 check, you know, to a family member and change their life, it, it brought back a memory for me of buying my mom a car. And that, you know, that changed her life and it made me feel so grateful that I was in a position that I could do that for a family member and be able to make a difference in her life. And I, I was asked recently by um, a, a mortgage originator, she said, when did, wh how did you go from being a mid-tier producer to a top producer? Like, what shifted for you? And my answer, to, I had to think about it, and my answer to that question is when I got clear that I was not in, just in the service industry, I was here to serve. And when I switched my own game and I started coming out to my referral partners and my clients and showing up, in fact, to this day on my bathroom mirror, it's on the left-hand corner, it says in service to dot, 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 how will I show up today? And I look at that every single morning. It's a choice for me. When I wake up in the morning, 
who am I here to serve, and how am I going to show up today? And one other thing I want to just bring forth, because Darren talks about it in this module, um, I coach with Daniel Harkavy at Building Champions, and we did this there, I do it with my coaching clients. And people get freaked out about this, but to start with writing your eulogy, and Darren talks about this in this module, and I have a lot of my coaching clients do this, because when I did this exercise personally, and I wrote my eulogy as one of the first things I did with Building Champions, it was profound for me. Um, when you start with the end in mind, and you go, okay, if I'm at my funeral, what do you want people to think, remember, feel about you, that you brought forth in the world? And when you start to, to see what you envision for your life, then you can look at where you're at today, where you want to be, and begin to make the shifts now so that you can propel yourself in a really meaningful way um, so that you really can accomplish. And doing that exercise is such a great thing. I would encourage everybody on this call, it's, it's something that it's really profound when you start to read what you'd like others to say about how they remember you and what you brought forth in the world. So it's a very meaningful exercise, but I, I just wanted to bring that forth. But Dave, I loved what you shared just now, so thank you. Thanks, Amy. I love. Yeah. I wrote down your in service to dot dot dot. How do I want to show up today? That's a great. And I love. Of course, you know it because you see it every day. But that's cool. I love it. Yeah. That's, and, you that's know, really awesome. Jen, oh, go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say this is Jen too. Is you know my mom. My mom said something to me one time. She said, because I, I mean, when my kids were little, you know, I just, I'm, I'm German, just so you all know. I'm 100% German. I'm OCD. Everything's got to be perfect. Everything's got to be clean. So I had all my, you know, my young kids cleaning, and she said, honey, in 100 years, it's not going to matter. What matters is what they remember today. And this gets back to what Darren was talking about, about writing your eulogy and, you know, and talking about it doesn't have to be a big thing. It's not that you're trying to, ch you don't have to try to change the world. You could if you wanted to, but you don't have to try to change the world. And I posted something that Helen Keller said on the, um, the, Facebook, the Facebook page last week. You know, it's about the little things. Um, the little things that you do, the, the one extra phone call you make to a client to help them feel better. When you sense that they're going, that they're a little angst about something, it's just that quick phone call. It's the little things that you do that can have really, really profound um, changes and that's where um, Cindy you're saying you know getting back to service you know we're not in a sales industry we're in a service industry but it comes from a servant heart you can't just be in the service industry and say that you are without actually demonstrating it and showing this and especially as leaders definitely you know and as managers showing that to your team, showing that to your processor if you don't have a team, showing it to your family members that you ha you know you're living through a servant heart. And if you're new in the business and it all sounds silly and you thought you were just going to get in and make a big buck, the way you make a big buck is creating, creating and seeking and looking internally for that servant heart because it shines through. And if you don't have it, they can see it a mile away. So. So this is a fantastic conversation. I see a few folks with their hands up. I want to make sure that the, the audience, one, you, everybody who's on this to participate, uh, gets questions answered. Uh, Mark Thompson, um, I've unmuted you. Um, did you have a question or a comment, Mark? No, I just, um, I'm blown away, guys, and honored to be um, a part of this group. Uh, this is exactly where I want to be and exactly where I need to be in my career. So thank you for the opportunity, and Dave, thank you for leading. Uh, when I was back in the day, uh, one of the things that did have a huge impact um, on my life is the presentation with Simon Sinek, um, and that was through Mortgage Coach, and um, I read the book. Um, I actually went through the Y University with Simon, and that was an incredibly revealing um, experience. Uh, reached out to someone who was not my best friend, um, but someone who I really trusted and respected in, in my community um, and asked him to walk through this exercise with me for the part to help me really define what that why is. And once I've established this why, uh, it is on my business cards. Uh, it is on my mirror in my bathroom when I wake up in the morning and I shave. Uh, it is on my marketing materials. Uh, it's even on my website. So it's something that I completely live by, and I can honestly say that it has had a huge impact on my life to centralize and to give me focus on being in the business. Um, and it's simply this. Uh, my passion is helping others to feel safe and secure so they have the freedom 
to have fun and enjoy life. And when I keep that in mind, whether it's the relationship I have with my wife and helping her to feel safe and secure, or my children who are growing up to help them feel safe and secure so that they can have the freedom, or if it's my employees who work with me to making sure they have a safe environment so they can have the freedom to have fun and enjoy life, or if it's my clients to make sure that their dreams and goals are there to feel safe and secure so that they can have the freedom to have the choices and to do the things that they have in their life. So I'm excited to be able to take this why now, hopefully, to the next level. And I'm envisioning that through this insane productivity, um, I look forward to the journey. Thanks for letting me here. Hey, no, it's, it's, it's an honor to have you. And I see so many familiar names. The, it's such a distinguished group of folks that have signed up for this program. And Mark, that was a great, that was a great why. So one thing that reminded me is when we did week one of this mastermind, I had everybody go around and, and talk about why are you part of this program? Why did you invest to become part of this program? Uh, obviously, there's a financial investment that everybody made. But let's face it, in the mortgage industry, the bigger investment that everybody's making, it's your time and it's your attention. You know, you've decided that I'm going to trust this program. I'm going to invest a whole lot more time than the $1,000 that you invested to sign up for it. So, so Mark, really quick, and I'm on the spot here. You know, why, why Insane Mastery? Why are you dedicated to this program, at least at this point? Yeah, um, my focus was this. I've realized um, so far, year to date, due to circumstances, some beyond my control and some within my control, I am not where I want to be uh, in my career and where I want to be towards the end of the year. Um, and I realized that if I am going to hit my goal. And if I'm going to do that, quite honestly, I need to have some insane productivity. And I'm looking forward to the guidance for that, but I'm also looking forward to the accountability in order to be able to be a part of that too. So awesome. um, that's why I'm here. Love it, love it. Well, one of the reasons why I put this mastermind together uh, was for accountability for the folks that have signed up and also accountability for myself to go through the program and to be, you know, to, to master this content at a level that's not only valuable personally, but valuable as a leader. So that's awesome, brother. Um, I'm going to go ahead and lower your hand, but feel free to speak up if something else comes up. Uh, and raise it again. Um, the more participation, the better. Uh, Michelle Town, I noticed that your hand's raised. Uh, anything you want to share or any questions that you have? Michelle. So maybe Michelle. You're muted, or I'm going to lower your hand. So, Michelle, you are welcome to jump in if you get unmuted on your side. So, does anyone who's new to the program, you know, this is your first weekend, you know, we're, we're talking so much about values, we're talking so much about, you know, what is success to you, call it your why. Um, anybody else want to share either a personal why, you know, why you're a mortgage professional, what is success to you, or why did you sign up for this program? I think getting in the habit of being intentional around why is so important. I mean, we believe in that so much that part of our training, it always starts with why. It's like, why are you on the mortgage coach team? You know, why, why are you here? Anybody want to share a why? Wow, we've got some unmuted folks. Ah, Jim, Jim, jump in. What's your why? Or another question if you have it. Well, hey, look, I, I've been. I've been a I was a top producer um, for a number of years, and then when the recession hit, I kind of buried myself and really just became complacent in the business. I know what it takes to be successful. I'm just having a tough time kind of getting ramped up again, and I needed something to kind of kickstart me. And this is the, this is the program I've been looking for. Um, thanks to Cindy and Michelle Town, I'm, I've jumped in with both feet, and, and I'm I'm really looking forward to this. And and I've always had the same intention. My intention is to help others. Um, through this process. What the process that we put people through in the mortgage side is a difficult process and my job is to make it as simple and easy as possible so that this, our consumer, our client, hopefully our friend, um, understands that th this is about them, it's not about me. And the more that they understand it, the more I educate them, uh, I, these are clients for life and, and I, I enjoy that. But this program is going to hopefully get me back to that $100 million mark that I've been at before. It's been a while, but I know what it takes to get there, and this is that's why I joined the group. Love it. Thanks, you for being so transparent and sharing, and we're here to help you 
make it to the next level. You know, any any claims that you want to make along the journey, uh, either in this call, which again, it's a private call. You know, this is just folks who have signed up for the program. So everybody here is here for the same reason: take it to the next level, improve their productivity as a as a human being and an executive. Um, so anything you want to share, feel free to post it in our secret Facebook group. Uh, I do encourage folks to share, you know, your why, uh, questions that you might have. As we do these calls from week to week, if there is a topic that you want us to start with, uh, Todd Bookspan has really taken on a big lift in the videos that he created to take you through this experience and for how often he's showing up. So Todd and I are looking at this Facebook group. You know, if you want us to start a topic, let us know. And if you do um, have the transparency to share something, uh, we will try to shine a light on that during this call. So I, I put another shout out to folks that are on the call. Does anyone have a question? Does anyone have a why that they want to share? Or does anyone want to share their, you know, their three values that Darren asked us to get clear on in session five or so, module five? Anyone? Hey Dave, this is Kristen Masterly, and um, while everyone is thinking about this, I just wanted to throw in another um, kind of message related to this. I was thinking about how um, communicating your values or understanding your values is so important, not only for obviously like personal production, what that what that evolves into, but also integrating that into all of your marketing and uh, recruitment messages. Um, this is kind of one of the primary things I talk about when I talk about how to to increase production with millennials, and obviously that's kind of a general public trend, but um, just keeping in mind that, you know, as you, what millennials and, and everyone really today is looking for are people that are authentic and trustworthy, and they really care about helping people, um, like they want to work for companies that are, they feel like they're part of a greater purpose, and so including incorporating all of that as your primary message is really going to increase production overall with your business, and one of the reasons why value working with mortgage coach members because I think they do a really great job with that as well. Um, but anyway, just wanted to throw that into the mix. Well, it's, a, it's a great throw into the mix. In fact, I was talking to an incredibly successful branch manager here in the Portland market and he was talking about how they, they used to use this marketing and all of the, you know, the pictures were like, you know, let's just say they were people that didn't represent the Portland market that he served, you know, and, and as soon as they got clear on really creating marketing that aligned with their culture, that aligned with the marketplace that they served, it, it really made a difference. It made a difference in production. It made a difference in the engagement of the loan officers wanting to use the marketing. So I, I, I mean, that's kind of a, I don't know, call it an enterprise example of putting what you put into action. But I think every individual loan officer, as we get clear on our values, you know, I love that story, Dan, or not Daniel, but um, Darren talks about, you know, the investment in the hamburger chain, uh, and he talks about how, you know, that decision became really clear once he got clear on his values. Uh, what I would push everybody to do on this call, action item for everyone, once you're clear on your values and your why, does your marketing portray that? Is what you're doing on Facebook portray that? It's, does your LinkedIn profile portray that? If someone does a Google search of you, you know, they type in your name in Google, is that who you are? Is that how you want to be seen? Is that something you're proud of? And does it align with your why? And uh, so, Kristen, that was huge. That was a big, big value add, something for everybody to think about. All right. So well, I, don't know, I don't know if you guys have all seen that video that Kristen posted in the under the social media part that comes out in module one, especially those of you who are already on six or seven, make sure you go back and watch it. I think I think Kristen you totally nailed it with that with that video. That was really awesome. Great, thanks. And that was a good action item you said, Dave. I'll post that to the Facebook group as well. Good. Yeah, thanks Kristen. And and if you you know, Kristen is a millennial. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know Kristen Messerly, she's just a fantastic next, next generation leader, you know, in our industry. I met her um, as a speaker in an MBA event a couple years ago, and we've become friends. And she she really is on point in this industry, and represents the voice of a millennial. But I think what's important for us all to realize, you know, I'm over 50, and pretty much the same things millennials like, I like. 
you know, I like people with purpose. I like, you know, I like mission-driven leaders. I like clean marketing that doesn't look like it was created in the 70s or 80s or even in 2000. Uh, I like doing life on my mobile device. So it's like the same thing that millennials want is the same thing that everybody wants. You know, so uh, Kristen, you bring a lot of great energy to the call and a great and great wisdom. So keep it coming. Thanks so much. Uh, I think one more thing. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I think, Dave, one more thing to add about the private Facebook group. You said it's great that you and I are going to be engaging with people, but I think more importantly is if you guys scroll down who are new, you'll see that Darren is actually engaging with all of us on that Facebook page. Um, Dave said it, Dave Gallego said it earlier that, you know, uh, Darren's why is to see all of us succeed, and he, he really does want to hear from us how we're improving our lives because of his teaching. Uh, so that's a great thing to, you know, not just questions, uh, but also your success stories on the on the Facebook page would be a great uh, great thing to add because you'll see Darren will definitely uh, be jumping in there and, and talking with us all. Yeah, and I, and I do want to remind folks these mastermind calls are being recorded. I personally think they've been awesome. So I mean, every single call that we've done so far, I've been really proud of the engagement that's taken place, the questions that have been asked. Uh, I'd say this one's been a little quieter, so I've given the audience a couple times to raise your hand, but I would tell you if you're on this call, you know, there's, there's, there's a group of us that I invited to help with this, you know, creating this content for the mortgage industry. The people I invited are people that knew Darren's content, you know, in, in Todd Bookspan's case. I mean, he's gone through Darren's program. How many times did you go through it? Like four? Oh, I, you know, well, yeah, now I'm actually up over seven or eight as I'm going through it because I'm using that net time he talks about and I'm listening to it again while I run. So it's been uh, it's been a lot of fun. I, I got a great app called it's called ASC. I just looked it up on the in the Apple App Store uh, and it's and I just looked up speed up audio. So it's you know for me it's really hard after listening to so many books on Audible where I can listen to it on two or three times speed to so listen to something normal pace. So uh, so I've actually downloaded all of all of the modules since Darren allows you to do that all in audio and then I put them all on my on my phone so I can so I can listen to it a little bit faster and uh, so that's been kind of fun to to run through it pretty quick so any of you who are audible people love hearing it fast it just seems to me every time I listen to an audio book now that doesn't offer that you know drives me crazy hey Todd would you mind putting a post um, one just kinda describing that move that you just described because I want to join that and two, a link to that uh, that app for everybody? Absolutely, absolutely right. That net time was what Darren talked about on that last call, right? No extra time. And uh, you know, again, one of my favorite things is, is his productivity, personal productivity plan, which he reveals, I think, when we get towards the very end. But uh, but that'll be a good. I think that'll be a good thing for uh, for most of us. Um, quick shout out to you. I think a couple of you who are on the call are going to be at the Building Champions Experience next week. And uh, Dave is just about to announce that he's doing a breakfast there, that he and I are going to participate in a breakfast mastermind. So any of you who are there, um, be looking for an email sometime today on uh, on the details. So that's that's awesome, Dave. Thanks for doing that. Yeah, no, no. We're going to be uh, hosting a mortgage coach mastermind breakfast on Tuesday morning at the Experience down in Sun River on Tuesday. So anyone who's there, uh, one, hope to see you at that breakfast, and two, uh, text me. I would love to connect with you at that event. Let's make sure we say hi for those of you that are um, going to the experience next week and you're on today's call. Uh, so I'm going to throw it back to the audience. Uh, anybody in the audience either have a question or you'd like to share some type of why that's really pushing. You just want to get out there and share with everyone. We're going to give you 15 seconds to jump in. Uh, Nicole Francis raised your hand. Nicole. I have unmuted you. Uh, hey, Nicole. Hi, good morning. Hi. Um, so I'm a huge Cindy Ertman fan and pretty much love to follow her around. But as this year has been, you know, really incredible, I felt that we've, you know, reached the production goals that I set for myself and that I need to dream a little bit bigger. In doing that and having growing pains, it's important to set and be really in, intentional and aware of how we're going through this. And as you get busy, you know, certain things 
get pushed to the side. And, and I really appreciate what everybody has said so far because it truly is an honor to serve. And it's great to have a platform where I can be surrounded by people that are of the same mindset, that want to do the same thing so that I can create an impact. Um, I'm mentoring somebody and when I look at the job that I'm doing there, I just realize that I have a long way to go. So, you know, my hope is that this is going to help me get very clear and intentional about that and just have to go both internally and externally as well. Love it. Thank you, Nicole, for being here. Uh, by the way, you're one of the top uh, mortgage coach users at RPM, so thank you for being such a great role model um, in mortgage coach one. Somebody's got feedback. Oh. Hey, wow. Nicole. Nicole, we oh, got to we 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 mute you, Nicole. And, and by the way, Nicole, I know you can hear me right now. Um, you've got so much energy and wisdom and value to bring to this mastermind. So really want to encourage you to speak up more. But uh, let's also um, figure out the technology issue there because you have so much to bring to this call. And I, we do not want to have to mute you. Uh, call me, and I'll be happy to help you work it out. Um, just text me or call me, and I'll I'll personally be your tech support person. All right. So uh, Michelle Town, you know, you uh, raised your hand. Did you have something you wanted to share? Yes. Can you hear me? We can, and you sound great. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I am so tech. I I need a I need a gen. I, I need a millennial <laughs> working on my phone. Um, first, um, thank you guys all for sharing. Um, I, great feedback. I mean, great, great what I hear. Um, I am, I struggle a little bit with writing about me and my why. I, I think I've, I think I have two pages of whys that I keep crossing out because I'm overthinking them. Um, but I will tell you, for me, where I think I've, I've narrowed it down to my whys are a lot of the same that everybody else is sharing, which is service. Um, however, where I struggle, and this probably goes back to Jen being um, in demand instead of on demand, is in our industry because we are a service oriented. Um, sometimes my clients think that, um, and I've had several clients, and these are the ones that I don't want to work with anymore, that are like, you should be available for me when I call anytime. So I'm, I'm asking for feedback on people who are gone a lot longer than I have in this business, what, what do you do with these people? I mean, how do you, how do I put them back into the place where it, I'm in service and not feeling like they're taking from me? So let me do this, because we're at one, we're at the five minute mark. I'm gonna make sure someone answers that question. I do um, wanna remind folks, participate on our Facebook page. Please, the more people that share their why, I mean, what you just brought up, Michelle, you know, I'm having challenges with, with, with my why. I think the more mortgage coach leaders that are on this call that share your why in a way that's public, and we can all, you know, review it, study it. I mean, I, I think this is, there's two topics that we would probably talk about the entire 12 weeks. You know, one is how not to be ADD and multitasking um, all day long and not have more on time, you know, where we're, we're not being distracted and we're doing deep quality work. I have a feeling that that is going to be something that we're, we're helping each other for the whole time and, and really getting clear on our why so that it really is um, pushing us. And it's, it's, it's something we believe, something we're committed to. So I think we'll be talking about it a lot. So please share your whys. I think that would be helpful to you, Michelle. And then I'm going to hand this one off to answer that question. You, you know, you have access to Cindy, so Cindy, um, you can tell her your thoughts on that later. Uh, Jen, do you mind answering that question on behalf of the the leaders on the call and try to do it within a couple minutes? So we've got one minute. <laughs> we've got one minute. No pressure. <laughs> yeah. I know so, you're telling me that on purpose because it's me. Um, no, you know, I actually, I actually. Um, you know, it did do some kind of answering of it before, and I, I'm sorry if it if it wasn't clear. And you know, I, I'll try it again. I'm going to try to attempt it again. You know, I think that um, 
you know, Michelle, I don't know how long have you been you've been in the business. I think maybe uh, because I'll just let it out. I'm 52. I'll be 53 on Thanksgiving this year. You guys can send me thank yous or birthday gifts. Um, but I will. Uh, I think I think what's happened to me is you know I mentioned before in early in my life I learned and then I've spent an exorbitant amount 33 years in lending, earning, and chasing the deal and worrying about numbers and worrying about all that. And now I'm at this point in my life where I want to return. It's giving back. It's this servant heart that, you know, it's always been there. It's just really dormant. And now I'm straddling that. You know, I want to do tons of numbers, and I do. I, you know, I'm one of the top producers in the country, but I, I really want to serve people. And I, you just have to draw a line in the sand and look at these people and make a decision as to whether or not these are truly people you want to work with. And if not, it's time to let them go. And Darren has said this, and you know, I always get confused about all the modules because I know so much about what he's talked about. But you know, if this person would not come to your funeral and this person would not cry at your funeral, he tells us, let them go. Let them go. They're just not not worth all of that. There is someone else out there that will give you just as much without all the headache. There is. And sometimes you have to get to the point where you're not a yes woman and you start saying no to people. And this is the in-demand versus on-demand. You know, we, we are, you know, it, I have clients, I have a doctor who's going to, who's waiting to talk to me until next week because, and he's purchasing because he knows I'm on vacation. Right now, I've, on, I've been on vacation for a couple of days and I'll be on vacation next week. He knows I'm on vacation, he's willing to wait. That's in demand. On demand is freaking out that you're not gonna get that one loan. There are plenty out there and there's just, you know guys, my husband had three heart attacks two years ago because of this business. And that was a huge shift for me in not volume, volume's the same, but saying, you know what, enough is enough. Who is wagging the tail here? I'm a professional. You wouldn't do this to a doctor, and I'm just as professional, just as much of an expert that they are, and hey guys, we make more money than they do. Yay, right? But the bottom line is, you have to start treating me like a professional, and the only way that's going to happen is if you act like a professional. You've got to draw the line in the sand and say, you know, I want to work with you, but this just can't not happen. And if they get all their feathers getting ruffled, then so be it. So be it. And that's part of the challenge of saying goodbye to people. It's just like we do with loans, right? We have to say goodbye to some loans. And once you have enough loans, you can say goodbye to more of them because they're just too much of a hassle. And they put too much of a strain on your team and yourself. So I hope that helps to answer it a little more. I'm happy to help you with scripting, but that's that's really what it boils down to. You gotta you gotta where you, take care of yourself first. Yeah, so I'm gonna jump in here. So one, Michelle does an insane amount of volume, so she is a, definitely does a lot of business. I think this is a problem for folks at every level. I mean, you know, you guys are at the highest level, you know, like franchise player volume. Um, but, you know, even when, you, you know, loan officers get to, you know, doing over eight loans a month and loan officers that are doing six to 12 and don't have an assistant or, you know, they're, they're, this is just, always a struggle. So let's do keep the conversation going because Jim, what you said is right. It's like, and I think we all intellectually know that, you know, but the actual doing is not so easy. Yeah. And, there's, and there are a lot of nuances in that. So Michelle, let's, let's bring that topic back in next week. Um, if you don't mind even posting in Facebook, let's get a conversation around that. And then Todd and I will make sure we, we have a little bit more of a robust dialogue around that versus you just throwing it out uh, uh, and then Jen trying to answer it in one minute. Uh, right. <laughs> sound good, you guys? Is that cool, Michelle? Absolutely. Right on. Uh, but I, I do not want to just move over this topic because it's a big one for a mortgage professional. And I think when, when you can get it right, um, that's something that could really help you execute at a higher level. I hear so many loan officers when it comes to a total cost analysis, oh, I don't have time. I don't have time. I mean, I mean, it takes five minutes to do a total cost analysis. And uh, for those of you that are on the call you, and, and you do it for all your families, you know how well you're rewarded. You know what an insane productivity strategy 
giving a family a total cost analysis is. And so once you have the habit to go like, oh, you don't have time to do that, um, there's something wrong. I mean, you're, you're not making time for the important things. So Todd, could, could you make sure we really crush that question as we kick off next week's call? Are you, do you mind Absolutely. I was glad you didn't call on me for the one minute synopsis. So thanks, Jen, for stepping in on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll remember that, Dave. All right, all right. Well, hey, uh, so hey, we are one minute past the hour, and I, I really want to be committed to everybody committing an hour to this and then saying goodbye. Please uh, ask questions. Please be vulnerable. Share your whys. Share the struggles that you're having. The more people that share authentically the struggles and the wins that they have over the course of this mass. Uh, the better this experience will be for you. So uh, I am here to serve you in this journey through Insane Productivity with Mortgage Coach, and I know the um, coaches, leaders that are here with me, we're all here to serve. So for everybody on this call, we can only serve you if you speak up, we can only serve you if you ask questions, and we can only serve you if you authentically share your challenges and your wins. So please and guess come what? here with we that can we can only learn from you if you speak up, because I'm still learning. I can't wait to hear what you all have to say. So please Heard speak it. up for our benefit, too. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Cheers to that. Have a, have a great weekend, everybody. And uh, see you later. Thanks, Todd. All right. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, everyone.